Hey guys, Dion here. Welcome to part two of my Sullis table build. Today I'm going to run you through the cutting of my foam and what progress I've made on the table. I've rough cut in all the lava flows and started making progress on making the edges a bit more rough. I'll show you what I've done in a bit of a closer look. So basically all I did, I took one of these, just your standard run of the mill Stanley knife, basically just cut out all the lava. You know, through here, sort it through. It was quite easy to do, but you have to be careful not to not to push and stab. You wanna you wanna saw so it ends up with a nice smooth cut, which looks something like this one. You notice I've got a slight bevel in places, you know, and that's achieved by, you know, just as you're cutting, just make sure your knife's on a bit of an angle and you cut all the way through. So this board is the board I've got to do, and this is the one I'm gonna show you on how to rough up today but I've done these other two. So it's quite simple, you know, just to rough up the edges. All you're really doing, all you're, it's a bit hard to see, but all you're looking for is rough edges, nothing too precise. You want to be careful so it doesn't look too organized. You know, you want to make it a bit interesting, so I've got areas here where, you know, you imagine lava overflows, or maybe there's some, you know, just a bit of wear and erosion. So I'll give you a couple of pointers here with making sure things don't seem too too much like shapes or too much like you planned it. So previously, these bits here used to be three groups. They just look a bit like like this, which kind of looks a bit like one of the screen masks. So you know, I chopped up another piece, chopped up this piece, break them up a bit. Now I've got four bits. You can arrange them however you want. Right, this is how I achieve the rough jagged look. So something to bear in mind is it's always easy to add more cuts. It's a lot harder to take some back. So all you really want to do, it's quite simple. Saw in there, saw in there, flick it out. If you want to keep this fairy, you, know, you pick up you pick up different techniques as you go along. As you can see, it's really easy. As long as you have a sharp knife, you can do it with basically anything that's sharp. Uh, you might see a lot of people with uh, oh, heated electric knives, which makes it a lot easier to cut through, or hot wire cutters. You can pick them up relatively cheap, but unless you plan on making a lot of terrain, this knife here costs a couple of dollars. Blades are replaceable. Uh, I think this is about my third blade on this job, just because I like to keep it nice and sharp. If you're not too sharp, it starts making a bit, you know, as soon as it starts screeching too much as you cut through, and you know, it's not cutting sharp enough. So, you, you want to make sure that if you're cutting on the side like this, that you stop and check out the top. As long as it doesn't look too, too uh, even, then you're doing an alright job. So while this, you know, doing this, I've probably been working on this and the other board for a, for a good few hours now, most of the morning. Uh, if you start finding you're getting a bit tired, I'd recommend having a stop because when I found when I was getting too tired, or you know, just getting a little bit bored to be honest, uh, my cuts were getting deeper. I wasn't paying as much attention. So you just want to watch, make sure that you're not getting, you know, too many big cuts in there. You, know, you vary it up a bit. You, know, you can cut on an angle. You know, there's a there's a bit of thing, a bit of an angled cut there. Cut a bit in there. Yeah, you know, as you see, look at that looks a bit more natural.
there you have it. Pretty done. Pretty good. Uh, to make things a bit more interesting, you might want to, like some of my other areas, you just want to uh, cut in on the angle a bit and flick it out. You make it so your chop's not quite perfectly flat. There you have it. Yes, that look nice and jagged in there. Alright guys, so there we go. That's all the cutting done. So I'm pretty pretty happy with how it looks. I think I can come back and play with it a little bit more once it's glued. But for now I'm going to show you how to glue the foam to the MDF. For that I'm going to use liquid nails. Uh, you could use PVA glue, but I'm a bit worried that PVA glue tends to shrink as it dries. Uh, and if you have one side of your board all covered in PVA glue, uh, there is the risk that your board will warp. Right guys, to glue down my foam to my MDF I'm going to be using uh, this stuff. Liquid nails. You, know, you can pick it up from all uh, hardware stores. So I'll just show you how to use it and how to use the caulking gun for those that may not have used it before. So it comes in a tube like this with a cap. You basically just need to chop off your cap. Pretty simple. It's quite easy to do. Apply, apply a bit of pressure and it comes straight off. And then when you buy your glue, you make sure you pick up a few of these at the hardware store. Usually they're free, and usually I pocket a few every time I go in there, because they're very handy to have. So all you do is screw it on there. Then you need yourself a caulking gun. Those caulking guns look like this. Basically just want to put your cartridge in here, like so. Get it in there, put it in here, and then it's just simple as pumping it, and the glue comes out the other end. Another handy trick, uh, you want to make sure that the, the glue comes out at a decent flow rate, so you just want to make sure that your nozzle, you can it's probably a bit hard to see here, but the nozzle's you know, got some flashing on it from when it was cast, so you just want to make sure you chop that off. It's best to just to do it on a bit of an angle. There we go. And as you can see, you know, you've now got a nice uh, easy angled bit to glue against. So you just have to spin around the tube. Got it there. Now that you're ready and all set up to glue, you just want to do one final check. Make sure that there's no loose bits. Underneath it's all nice and flat. You don't really want to be accidentally gluing down your board that's not flat. So just give it one final once over. Get your fingers in there. Make sure it's all nice. Oh, there you go, see? Broke off a bit there. The most challenging part, I think, I've never done this before, of the table build. You need to make sure your foam is perfectly lined up with your MDF. Which means, you know, you need the corners all nice and square. Now, I did think about making some sort of fancy contraption that I could use to square the corners, but I'm here now, and I think I'm just going to wing it and glue it on. So, right, so, get your foam, get your caulking gun. Now you want to go, you want to go very easy on your caulking gun. You don't want to overdo the, overdo the pumping, because it can come out, you know, I don't know if you can see that there, but it can flow quite quickly. So you just want to do it nice and easy, and you want to have some of this stuff on hand, some paper towel. You really don't want to be getting this stuff anywhere near anything it shouldn't be because it can be hard to get off. Just want to make sure you get it in the corners and it's simple as just running it down here. You can see it's flowing nicely all the way around there. Around here. And then you just go backwards and forwards. You want to let go of the trigger. You don't want to just sit there and hold it down. You're not firing a machine gun. You just want to carefully control how much you put down and where it goes. You don't need much. This stuff's quite strong and at the end of the day you're only gluing foam. You just want to make sure you get it 
in the corners so they're going to be the parts that come off all right so once you've once you've got some glue down you just want to take the pressure off your gun so if you push the back bit in here pull it off you know, see it fell out but that will stop it flying out so we take this bit and we flip it over now for the hard part we want to basically set it a bit off the edges on each side give it a squish let the glue flow around a bit and then drag it towards the edges just using your thumb, thumb as a guide squeeze it down Don't want to apply too much pressure to it because it does tend to want to, you know, you push it down and you'll notice it will slide around a bit. So you just want to get it nice and even. Uh, so just when you're finished with your, your glue, just to preserve it so you can use it next time, highly recommend a screw. You just screw it in. Uh, some people put nails in them, but I found, uh, especially in my garage, it gets a bit hot. And when it's hot, the nail can just pop out and you have glue everywhere. At least with a screw, you know, you, it screws in, it gets a bit of grip, and it should, hopefully, the only amount of glue you'll lose is the bit in the nozzle around here that dries a bit. The next time you use it, you just squeeze a bit harder and it comes out. Alright guys, so I've finished all my all my gluing now. So you just want to be extra careful. Stack the last board. You want to just grab it, if you can see that in the camera. You just want to grab it by your fingertips, just on the timber. Pick it up very carefully and just place it down. I like to stack them, well, I think stacking them this way is going to be the best for drying. Uh, timber side up. And we'll go around and just do one final check, make sure nothing's moved on that last board. It's nice and flush. Flush. Not too flush here, so maybe just uh, push this one in a little bit. Close enough. Alright. Then it's just a case. Stacking some weights on the top, making sure you get the corners weighed down appropriately. There you go guys. Uh, I've cut the foam, I've glued it to the MDF and it's all just sitting here nicely. Uh, I'll leave it overnight, let that glue dry. I probably won't get around to doing any more progress tomorrow because I've got a few other things to do. So it looks like my next instalment will be covering it in PVA glue, covering it in sand and making the lava. Maybe getting to painting depending how I go. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to my videos and I hope to see you next time. See ya.